All right, welcome to the um, diversity and inclusion working group. Um, I've some of you have been on the call for a minute. I've just seen the chat post of the notes, but if you could put your name and how you're feeling. Um, um, or whatever you want to say or not say in the notes, that would be amazing. Um, so the one, I'm just going to follow the agenda here. And if, I guess before I start doing that, is there anything that anyone on the call wants to talk about today that is not on the agenda notes already? Okay, well, type it in if it comes up later. Um, so the first question is whether or not all the metrics are in a continuous receipt release cycle and have passed the review period on the website and spreadsheet. So I'm just going to, I guess I'll share my screen. Uh, that is helpful for the video participants. Um, if I can, there we go. Oh, wait a minute. Nope, that's the wrong screen to share. This is where screen sharing gets challenging, but I'm going to try this one more time. Um, yes, I'm competent with Zoom. All right. I'm just going to. Right. Let me make this bigger. That didn't do what I wanted it to do. That was not what I wanted to happen. I wanted to, okay, okay. I guess you can't really make a Google Doc bigger. I thought it, you can. You just have to use the Zoom function in the. I thought I did. At the top, inside the document, where you can oh, change the text, there's a Zoom field. Right inside the document. That's there. That'll yeah. be better for people with smaller screens. Um, so the first thing is um, this diversity and inclusion issue. Um, so on October 14th, it was to collect comments about the next metric release. Somebody spoke. No, Georg. Oh, okay. Um, um, yeah, I've been on it. Okay, so. Um, Probably because you know how Zoom, you have to like scroll over to see people. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, hi, um, Emily. hi, Emily. Um, Georg, can, can, you're more familiar with the metrics release process than I am. You're trying to find a what? Oh. <laughs> so is the, is the question in the agenda just, um, are there comments that we need to address? So the metric stays open until the next, okay. or the, the, Comment period stays open until the release. So the question is, are there any comments that we want to address? See. Okay. And so let's for see. The, the first, first one, there was not. No. For the second one, I think there looks like there's been some discussion from you. Yep. Lawrence had some good feedback on the question format. And then last week, we discussed that right now we don't want to make any more changes until we get. You know, any more input? I'm just gonna put a status quo comment in there for today. Okay. Um, at least we know we talked about it and there was nothing, no comments on the other one. The current metrics are listed here. Yeah, that's just to this see is what's just our, this is public. What, We've already released those. Okay. Yep. And if you scroll down to the DNI metrics, we can see in oh, the right. community we that we have the two metrics under review listed. Oh, there we go. That's a very nice little icon. Well done. I think Kevin might have had something to do with it. I imagine he did. Okay. And then this is the current spreadsheet, which will probably tell us um, things that we're working on. So I, I see demographic diversity listening. I see a number 
of ones that are labeled as in progress on the top six categories but don't have documents. And then there are, it looks like two, okay, this, so, okay. Are the two document discoverability and communication channels, um, are they still in progress? Uh, it looks like there's at least some documents that have been started yep. for those. Okay, that looks, this one looks pretty far along to me. Yes, it is. Um, <clears throat> and we also have communication channels that is the next item on the agenda. So, okay, should I, I mean, for this one, I, I mean, uh, I haven't, I've, I think I've been in some discussion about this, but are there, are there, points of editing that we think are necessary before we put it into a re review cycle? Or do, do we think this is nearly ready for review? The this discoverability, looks, I don't... Yeah, it looks nearly ready to me. Content bias, it for sure has a lot. So if you want to spend some time on it, we can maybe take the next 10 minutes or so to work on it. Yeah, I would, I mean, I would say let's take the next 10, uh, or up to 10 minutes, I'll say. Um, if there's, if nobody has any edits, let's just read it and see if we think it's uh, something we want to put into the release cycle or not. So, Everyone, uh, put the link in the chat if you can go to that document and take Thank a look. You, that would be fantastic. And the question is Is this metric ready for public comment period, or are there edits that we want to make? today. Now, just a little background on this metric. We had started working on a metric around documentation. And it grew and grew and grew to the point where we said, okay, we need to split this apart. When you go to our website, right now we have documentation usability, which we released last metric release. And then we have documentation accessibility, which is the new one that we added a month ago or so. And so documentation discoverability is the last one in this set of documentation metrics. Okay, so basically, can I find it? Is it easy to find? I mean, this is about, yeah, can you find it? Is um, the is the information that you're looking for easy to find? Mm -hmm. Is it easy to navigate? Mm -hmm. Can you access it? And I see these specific objectives make that much more clear. Um, so I don't know if we've actually gone through and made sure that we eliminate the overlap with the other two documentation metrics and okay. I don't have them in my head. Um, me... Because screen reader friendliness, what we have here as the first item in implementation, that's also in documentation accessibility. So right there, that seems, sorry, I'm now looking for the tab that I was on. Uh, okay, so this is, yeah, that's already an accessibility for sure, you're right. And then the other one that you mentioned was um, documentation usability. Structural query, okay. I think 
don't see a ton of overlap with that one. The survey question is identical again. Oh, okay. Maybe we do want the same question. Probably not. That gets confusing. Accessibility, discoverability. This. So these survey questions seem like they're very dis specific to discoverability and they do not overlap with the other two metrics is my read. Headings, that feels like it might be in one of the other ones. So maybe we want to update documentation accessibility and remove the survey questions there. Oh, is that the same? We yeah, this, this is locate information. Mm, yeah, I, these survey questions, I do see some of these is somewhat overlapping. That looks like it's exactly the same, but that's, I guess, over. Oh. This to me looks like it is, it's like, I have a hard time distinguishing between these two metrics with, with at least with these, um, these surveys seem very, very similar. Yep. That's because we had one gigantic document and then we right. broke it out into the three. And so we haven't actually done the work on documentation discoverability to distinguish its uniqueness from the others. So to I me, see. it feels like we still need to do more work on bringing out the discoverability yeah. piece here. Yeah, like these, yeah, okay. And Justin has some good comments. Uh, Justin, Is it in the to... chat? Okay, go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, I was just adding in the in the Google Doc. Um, we use we mention accessibility a lot in the description and the overview of the metric, but it feels a little confusing to me because it feels like we're mixing discoverability with accessibility in terms of um, like accessibility and it's available in many ways, but also accessibility as in making it available to people who might have um, disabilities that require it to be in a different format for them to be able to access it. Mm -hmm. um, for me, like I, I haven't gotten, I, I didn't go deep into the implementation side yet. I was just starting to go through some of the questions, but right. me, the description is a little confusing. Like there's a part of it where we talk about like different formats to be equally empowering. And like that could mean screen readers, but we don't mention anything about, you know, having your documentation available through like having it screen readable, accessible. Um, does that, does that make sense? Uh, there's screen readers on accessibility, which is, that's where I'd expect to find it. Um, when I think of discoverability as a user human factors characteristic, I think of, can I even find it? Is really the question. Is, is there, when I go to a project and I wanna understand more about it, is where the documentation is super clear to me up front. Um, and also, can I find the answer to my question within right. that documentation. That's yeah. what I think. <clears throat> yeah. Got it. Now now it makes more sense. I guess I just didn't get that on a first read of the description. Maybe maybe we could be more clear about that or um, I don't know. I'm still thinking on it. You you're absolutely right, Justin. A lot of the text is identical with the documentation accessibility metric because you know, at the time we just copy pasted it and we still need to make this unique to discoverability. So everything that you're pointing out, we need to smooth out. Got it. 
I'm writing down what Elizabeth's. I guess my, my, my feel would be anywhere we have accessibility, maybe avoid using that word in anywhere in the doc since we already have another metric exclusively about accessibility. Yeah, I agree. Thank you, Gear, for bringing all that context in. Oh, yeah, of course. So now after this discussion, I feel like this is this requires a little bit more work um, and we've given a 10 minutes. Should we move on to our next agenda item or do people want to work on this a little while longer? I would say we move on to the next. Okay. Um, because we can spend another half an hour on this and yeah. there are other it's, metrics yep. that we wanted to work on. Uh, communications channels metrics follow up. So um, concept ready for review. Could use help from working group with a group brainstorm on implementation. Are these two links the same or no, they're not. Which link should I open here? Or I'll open this one first. Just okay. Yep. And Justin is the one who was leading this conversation, I believe. Justin, I will. Turn it over, give you the floor, I guess. Yeah, I mean, for this one, I think just maybe doing some silent editing would be helpful just to see how far we can get and to get some wider feedback. Um, maybe the one thing that we could discuss was actually the name of the metric. Um, you know, previously it was communication channels, and then we were like, well, we want to be clear that we don't mean asynchronous communication channels, we mean like real time. And then we we're like, oh, well, we also mean pub, we want to make sure we're clear about public and not private chat rooms. So I figured public chat rooms is just a better way of saying that than public synchronous communication channels. It just sounds a little wordy. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I just wanted to maybe mention that, see what people's thoughts were. That would be the one I think we could maybe discuss, but then maybe just 10 minutes of silent editing would be really helpful, mm -hmm. I think, just to get feedback. Over. I mean, for so for I think I think my I had one question. Like when I think of a chat room, I think of something sorted, I guess. Um, and I don't know if I'm just don't like when I think of like synchronous communication, I think of um, messaging, I guess I would call it more than um, chat room. Like a chat room, you would go to a chat room. I think of it as something that's like you can go to and there may be people there or may not like it's sort of like IRC. Um, I guess IRC is a, is that would IRC be a chat room under that definition? People think of it yeah. that way. Okay. Definitely. When I, I guess when I think of chat room, what, if somebody said to me, I'm going to be in a chat room, it would never occur to me that they would mean IRC or Slack. Right. I think maybe I have a historical legacy of what I think a chat room is. I think I might too. I might be from a similar period or era. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like chat rooms were something from the, I don't know, from a long time ago. I don't think of Slack or yeah. IRC chat room. I also agree with Justin that public synchronous communication channels is, is a bit heavy. Um, Very academic. What about just public chat channel? Or public public synchronous channel? Synchronous channels? Public now synchronous. I feel like we're bike shedding on the name. I'm sorry. No, no. I mean, it's it's cause like chat rooms just hit when I was come to when I gave the document last time. It, just that word, just kind of. That's not what I. I have that. I have some baggage with that phrase, I guess. Um, and I, I don't think of Slack or. Um, anything else IRC like, so public synchronous channels. Instant communication, public instant communication. Public instant. That's more that. I mean, that's less technical jargony. How do people feel we about? Just, we just call them chat channels. Like, what chat channel are you going to be on? What, like, we use Mattermost, so it's the same as Slack. It's just what 
we have all sorts of channels and groups and or channels on our team and if, if you have a link to a chat channel, you can just say chat with us here or discuss a topic here, chat channel. It, because they say like you can go back and look at it over time. It's not in real time and it doesn't disappear. Yeah, I like public chat channels. Um, I know what, uh, or even, well, Public is good. Open uh, is open chat channels a little too. I don't know. Now we're getting too pedantic. I feel like it can be pedantic. I think maybe we could we could go ahead and go with public chat channels, and then mm -hmm. since we'll probably be editing another time in the future, we can let it sit, yep. see how we feel about it, and it like come back to plan. it. Were there other items, Justin, that you wanted to cover on this document? Should we read it? That was. That was just the most the most pressing one, I guess. Um, so just if we want to maybe take 10 minutes and do silent editing, I think that would be really helpful too. All right, and let's just do I already it right see now. some comments in there. Let's, let's do okay, it right now. I, I had a question. Um, where it says whether about, it's right under description and it says whether about the open source project or not. Um, uh, first paragraph, uh, first sentence, actually. Um, yeah. I'm wondering, oh. yeah, do you mean, um, it, is it, what, I guess, what was intended there? Is, is, it, say, is it activities that, that maybe aren't about the project specifically, but are about related to this? project or not even related? I, when, when I wrote it, I, I was thinking specifically about having places for people who work on a project to talk about project topics, but also to have a place for like off topic or friendly chatter. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Okay. So it doesn't yeah, it was not reading it again. It wasn't clear. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Good catch. My reverse German prey, I made a lot more words out of it. Oh, I think that actually looks good. I mean, I it makes sense to me. I have a quick question about the ob under objectives. Mm -hmm. um, we're we're saying that we want to provide further resources for the reader to evaluate the specific context, but uh, so are we are we proposing that we ha like create a chart of some sort of like every possible chat channel um, and like all of the different features and benefits for um, for participants and also for moderation. To like help them decide. Yeah, I don't know what that one means. A, I, guess I mean, I, I think that would be rad, that. but. Mm. Yeah, I guess I was just thinking of having like an appendix style um, list of resources. They could be platform specific or not, but I think it would be. I figured amongst this group, we probably have folks that have some specific resources that we could just kind of combine together here. I don't think we should make it a goal to define everything. But maybe we could just like my, my idea was someone would be able to be inspired by this metric and then we'd be able to point them in places where they could go exploring deeper um, to figure out what makes sense for their community or their project. So there could Does be. Does that make sense? Um, 
Yeah. Essentially, uh, a list of available channel types might be a side effect of this metric that is useful. Is that what you're saying, Justin? Yeah, and we might actually over time, you know, who knows, maybe we could find places to dig deeper here too. But mm -hmm. um, I think for now we could, like the, I think that just being able to help point someone who is interested in measuring this metric to go a little deeper would be really helpful. Oh, and one thing I think is also kind of cool too is I think this could bring a little more renewed interest in some of the chat um, data collection features in Grimoire Lab. Like I know we have the Slack and Matter Bridge and Rocket Chat, and there's one more um, I can't remember, but uh, it'd be cool to try to build out those. You know, I'd be really excited to see other people work with those kinds of data or that kind of data too to show interesting things. But I haven't had a chance to get hands on. With, um, with that data in Grimoire Lab too. So that's where I was hoping to, maybe we could solicit some wider feedback with folks who are more on the development side too um, for the data collection piece, because I know we have instruments to do that. Okay, trace data. So you mentioned rocket chat, what was another one? Slack and matter oh, yeah. matter most. Yes, I've heard of one more. Is matter most one word? Go look it up. Oh yeah, IRC for sure. The classic. Um, I know. Oh, in and China Telegram. They use WeChat, but that's not exactly open or anything else. Well, it's it's used as an open source in Asia. Yeah, I mean, not, they have no other yeah. choice. Yeah, so I think it, I think it's valid in my opinion. Hmm. Yeah, it was kind of tough when I was a hyperledger because we had to do both WeChat and um, Telegram because the Chinese would only use WeChat and the Russians would only use Telegram. So it made our lot, but basically one of the things that I did is I had them write bots mm -hmm. to um, reflect everything that they did in Telegram and WeChat back to the god awful rocket chat that we were using. Okay. I'm so grateful to be able to be using Mattermost now because Rocket Chat sucks. Um, but that's what we ended up doing is we, we still forced them to centralize um, so that if like, you know, like for example, the uh, Hyperledger Aroha was primarily in Russia and Japan and Ukraine. And so they were all using Telegram. And so I'm like, you can use Telegram. You just have to have it reflect back and forth. And so they're like, okay. And they wrote it. Um, same with uh, China and a lot of the work that they were doing. It's like um, the problem was is they could get things sometimes out of WeChat, but they couldn't think get anything back into WeChat. Yeah. So the problem that they had with that is because that's by design. Yeah. yeah. Another yeah getter. So um, that's been one that has been brought up to us several times as to why did we do matter most and not getter, and we're trying to be open about what things we spend our money on to um, integrate in with the platform. Of course, anybody can integrate whatever they want um, because it's open source, but um, we spent money on Mattermost because we did an evaluation of them and we're trying to be transparent about our evaluations of the products. So, but Gitter has some, some really interesting, fun propagation abilities that I don't mm -hmm. think any of their chats have, but. Um, I've never even heard of Gitter, so. Well, like, plus, they just signed on to Matrix now, too. So they're going to bridge into the Matrix first. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 And so that was another reason why some of the people were like wanting to go that way. And I'm like, great, you can write it. <laughs> <laughs> it's open source. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> Lona, that's do you know, I was wondering for Mattermost, is that something you need 
to host yourself or need someone host it? Or is there a public instance like you have with Matrix? I don't know. I'm, you know, spoiled um, okay. in that, uh, <clears throat> you know, my husband threw that up for us for Burning Man like years ago. So we've been hosting Mattermost for Leading Bit for several years. Um, but I, I, I don't know if there is a, a public one that you can go in and do. Uh, but, you know, we got, he got it up and running in a couple of days. So I think the Linux Foundation is bull crap. When they sat there and said, oh, Mattermost is too hard for us to host. We didn't have a problem. And like I said, it's been up for years now. We used it for Burning Man. Yeah. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome. Wish I knew more. <laughs> yeah. It was just oh, something um, I was looking for, I couldn't find. And so I thought, hey, since you're using it, maybe you know something I don't. Well, you're, mm. if you come over to our platform, you can go and get started on some of that and have your version of it that's up for free that we're hosting. Is it, is I it? also wouldn't be surprised if someone hasn't made a container running Mattermost that you can just download and install. I'd be surprised as well for just yeah, there is there is a container, Amy. Yeah. So yeah. that means you could be up in five seconds. <laughs> and Dude. I would assume the Linux Foundation knows how to run a container. Oh, you'd think. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, this, way, this was from a year and a half ago, Amy. So maybe oh things have changed. It may not have existed a year and a half ago. Uh, um, but it well, also could be the infrastructure and everything behind the container as well that they just don't want to be involved in. I th yeah, I think there's a there's a level of um, infrastructure management where if you're if you're supporting all these open communities, you can't support every open thing they want to do as a practical matter with your infrastructure, unless you hire a hundred people to maintain it all. Um, By the way, I did want to show my appreciation. We have a mountain of comments here, and suggestions, and all these things that people are putting forth. So thank you, everybody. <clears throat> Yeah, these are great. It's always nice when we work on a metric and then we have like so many comments it spills over out of the document. It's just nice. Yeah. It just also means someone needs to go back through. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is there a, do we, do we have the concept of a doc? I mean, I'm looking at Justin kind of as the document sort of director here. Um, if I heard correctly. So um, it's been about 10 minutes on this document. Do we want to keep going or do we want to see what other items await us? For me, um, you know, I'm happy with having some time to work on it. I can, I'll yep. go through the feedback over the next week or two okay. and try to follow up. And then I can add it back to the DNI um, meeting agenda for yes. another group review when it's ready. So we did look at discoverability already. The only other agenda item of any significance is MozFest. And so I don't imagine, I mean, I think we could spend seven or eight more minutes on, on this document if people want to. And then I don't know, Matt, is MozFest a big discussion? Um, I don't know a lot about not, it, but I think it's a good idea. I, a, don't, I don't think Matt G is here. Yeah, neither uh, Matt G or nor Ruth, Ruth are here, here for MozFest. All right. So I'm just looking at um, MozFest 2021. They do have an info call. Um, I guess what I'm looking for is afternoon. A, I'm looking for a deadline, like for and a date of the event. And I'm not. Monday. The deadline to apply for the CFP is, is Monday. At like, Why does it say you know, that? There's a um, get involved. Go to the get involved page on the top. Oh, okay. All right. And then there'll be a call for proposals page underneath there. Yeah, up in that. Learn more about call for proposals. Okay. I'm really into this, so I can talk to um, Ruth and Matt G on email and disconnect with them and see what we're going to do for that. Yeah, I mean, it looks like we have a deadline before we meet again. So yeah. that, this is Wednesday, right? So that looks like Monday. So I'll take an action item for that. If I'm eight and six is 24, so maybe it's Tuesday. I don't know. It's Tuesday, 9 a.m. European time. time. Okay, so basically end of Monday, North American time as a practical matter. So speaking of next meetings, are we gonna cancel next Wednesday? Mm-hmm. 
Yes. All, all, all um, chaos meetings are canceled next week. Um, but we still have that one on Monday, George. Yes, that's the okay. only one. Okay. Because okay. we said in the community call they were all canceled. So I think there's an email that may get out to affect Georg that you might want to head off. Yep. Thank you. Okay. I will. And Elizabeth's on this call, so I imagine you've just headed it off. <laughs> Okay, so all right, so this is going to be handled as a back channel item. Um, and I'll just make a note of that in the minutes while people edit the document. Okay, well, Matt's already done that, so boom. I oh, have yeah, Discord. My students love Discord, and I haven't used it, so I don't know why. Yeah, it's did you know Augur is in the gaming community? Oops, yeah, Augur's. I was just. I'm sorry. I was just gonna say Augur's like uh, kind of prominent on the Discord uh, website slash open source. You see Augur oh. there. What? No, it's probably the other Augur. It's probably. Maybe... There's another Augur. I, I think so. That. Yeah, it's like were... a crypto Augur. Like yeah, there's, crypto there's a cryptocurrency thing. project that <laughs> used the name Augur two That's weeks right. after we changed our name to Augur and. We were just, you know, we became aware of it and we we're like, well, we just changed our name to Augur and then they come along, but they're a bigger deal. So it is, you know, it creates, it does create search problems for us. So sorry to put that salt in the wound. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, um, it's probably not us, um, but maybe it is. Maybe we're more amazing than we realize. I have no, I, I doubt it. So I think we're amazing, but now I'm going to have to make a note to look that up. Thank you for the task, Elizabeth. You're awesome. <clears throat> so I know the main thing that matters for our platform is whether or not those apps are open source or not. And so um, we're much more willing to do the hosting and the um, uh, API interconnectivity and all of that if it's open source. If it's proprietary, then um, we, we don't. Um, or we only do that for uh, instantiations of the platform for C6s that are individually branded and things of that nature. When you say we, you mean? IEEE, SA. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, so do we want to label which ones are open and which ones are not? Because I think it's helpful. Whether or not we can um, do the API work that we need to do to do the different integrations on the data collections that we need. Yeah. Um, like way easier to do the data collections for me on you know matter most because i've got a lot of control versus wechat where it's kind of like fuck you so of, of these i only know for certain that open irc is open um, um rocket chat's open source matter most is open source irc is open source i uh, did you say matter most is yeah i don't know if discord um, is open source but they provide an api for development oh what is the full 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 api is what you're saying yeah, for, for bots and automated automation on channels. Yeah, but Slack also provides APIs and they just changed them where we yeah. can no longer get the data that we want. Uh, okay. I think oh, I think open is like open means open source to me. Yes. Like I think and that that's... way we can edit it if we need to. I think we should maybe talk about both open versus closed and, and the levels on the APIs. Like okay. um, the fact that uh, Telegram has a much better API than um, you know WeChat does, for example, um, or that okay. you know Slack has a partial API but it changes often because <laughs> that'll tell us a lot about the maintainability of these. Yeah. Well, whenever I see whenever I see that it's closed, I I know that I can't rely on the API for outside yeah. integration because they really don't want that to be stable because having it stable lowers people's switching costs. So totally. they probably change it up a lot on purpose. Um, and they were, they probably tighten it up as they lock people in. That's, that's just a software business model. It's been around forever, right? Yep. Totally. Mm -hmm. But that can really impact us a lot on gathering metrics. Yeah. yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah. Tell you. Absolutely. <laughs> Poor Paterdia trying to get in there and get the metrics out of yeah. there. Sometimes it's really painful. Yep. Uh, just. Taking a step back here, I, I agree that this is really valuable information. 
is it something that we should include in a metric in a case I, or i think it's super helpful better in like a blog post that we link to i mean i think it's super helpful because it like it tells me as a like if i'm looking at the metric as a developer i'm going to focus in on the open platforms um before perhaps i focus in on the like like slack I mean, it's cool, um, integrate with it, but um, it's not as stable. If I have uh, an open platform, I think I'm more likely to feel confident building integration tools for it. <laughs> God, the emojis are cracking me up here. I don't know who did that, but uh, I think the emojis should be published in the metric. Like, like this is perhaps the most useful visual representation of technology I've ever seen. I don't know who did that, but. <laughs> My daughter thinks it's wonderful. This is uh, how she rates things. It's either poopy or she loves it. A, it's, a, it's binary. Yep. It's the it, new binary, the binary for the 21st century. Binary for seven-year-olds, at least. Yeah. <laughs> IRC, Zulip, and Matrix apparently mean what is Double full words. open? What does full open mean? Like, what's the difference between full open and open with Zulip? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, so I put, in. yeah, I put that just because like you have uh, platforms like Telegram that have like this partial mix of like open and closed stuff versus like platforms like Zulip or IRC where their full stack is open source. Um, so maybe there's, there's probably a better way of. So is is Rocket Chat that, full but... open then as well? Uh, like I, I didn't I don't know actually. I'm not I'm not very familiar with Rocket Chat personally. I think I think when I heard people talking about Rocket Chat and Matter most, the intention was the same as full open. If I was listening, so Rocket Chat I believe is full open, but it's only like one dude, by the way, who does all of Rocket Chat. If you go and look at its GitHub, it's like mm. one dude. Um, and Matter most is is uh, is full open. Um, Matter most is open source, but you can also get hosted. So I don't know if that makes a difference. Um, to me, I look at hosting like as a service similar to what Red okay. Hat provides for Linux or other companies provide for Linux generally. Um, and, and even when they host it, Amy, they don't do like some of the other hosts do where they limit it, um, or where they have like the hosted is really different than the open. Um, they're actually pretty on par with each other, which is nice, um, you know, versus like, for example, we're using GitLab CE versus GitLab Platinum. <laughs> They're very, very different applications. Okay, so the um, terms of service you mentioned earlier in chat is not from Mattermost, it's from you. Yes. Okay, all right. Yeah, no, IEEE is, um, we're trying to protect people. And so we have some additional rules than like GitHub has where you have to sign a, term, a, 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 a terms of service. You have to have a CLA, you require... Um, we're about to start automating required licenses. Um, you're required to have your meetings in a certain antitrust fashion. And in the CLA, it basically makes sure that everybody who does not accidentally discuss IPR. Um, because, you know, I've seen that kill a bunch of open source projects. So we've kind of created a lot of rules um, that are for everyone's protection. Um, and so we, that's one of the reasons we're requiring all that is because we want to make sure that everyone's signed off so that we don't have things like you know, somebody comes to a, one of the meetings and says, oh, we're doing this really cool thing. Everybody should do it. And then everybody writes and then they're like, ha ha, patented. Um, which, you know, we've seen happen in open source. <laughs> ha, ha, <patented. laughs> so, like, <laughs> that sounds like a great I, name I, for a ska I band. And I just thought it was Mattermost Terms of Service. So, yeah. Oh, oh no, no, no. Sorry. It, it's okay. ours. It's ours. Uh, is, do we just not have all the information about Gitter or is... I haven't implemented it, so I don't know. Okay. Right. I think Gitter was part of GitHub. Uh, so, so Gitter was originally a closed source platform that then was bought by GitLab and GitLab was going to open source it and I don't know where they got with that. <laughs> okay. Um, open source, let's see. I had signed up to one Gitter and I'm no longer on it. It was. I pay much attention to it. Yeah, it, it used to be more tightly integrated with github projects like it was really popular i think like 2014 to 16 maybe a little 
give or take a couple years, but um, I don't see it as widely used these days for new projects. Yeah, I, I just got asked that question a bunch, Justin, because of the fact that they, uh, because of the new integration with GitLab and the fact that our centralization is off of GitLab and then we're adding all these other different tools like Mattermost and we hope soon to do Big Blue Button and Redmine. And so we're doing all these integrations. And so people are like, why aren't you integrating with Gitter? GitLab's already integrating with Gitter. And I was just like, eh, we'll, we'll wait until they're done. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Pay for yeah, because actually probably getting matrix integration would get Gitter once they do their big rewrite anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Is there so a hunting? Sure is, is there a metric akin to forks on GitLab? It's a good question. I don't see one that's on this repo, but that might just be something they don't. I'm not signed in, so maybe. I'm going to mute. <laughs> All right, yeah, OK, there's forks. Once you sign in, I can see the mm -hmm. forks. We have to be signed in. I mean, it does it does appear open. There's 288 forks. That's You're not a bad chicken invasion. It's not a bad number. We have about two minutes left anyhow, so. Um, probably should uh, do a wrap up. Um, I'll just make a comment on Gitter. Insert comment linked to the GitLab project. Um, and we're about a minute and a half left, so we can keep working. But I will call the meeting to a close on time. I'm going to head out. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you. I think uh, that's a good signal, too, to just uh, I'll call the meeting to a public end. You can continue editing the document as you wish. Um, uh, and I'd say that. Uh, Thank you, everyone. Yeah, all Thank metrics. You. So, so we thanks for there. driving, Sean. Oh, a coordinated. Oh, you know what? We don't have a coordinator for next meeting. Does anybody want to volunteer? It'll be at two weeks. All right, I will just be signing up. Guess not. All right. Um, all right, I will, um, I will be the coordinator for the next meeting uh, and welcome anyone else who wants to also, or instead of me coordinate, uh, to just uh, let me know. Um, Otherwise, I will stop recording and see you all in two weeks. Take care.